play a game? Why, yes. I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shame Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. Welcome back. I'm your host, Shane Stack. So glad to have you with me on the live show. Remember, this also goes out as a podcast, uh, and I'll go over that here in a bit in our housekeeping notes. I'm really excited today. I have a couple of cool guests that we'll get to here in a second. But before we do that, let me go over the notes, the, uh, the notes that I've always got to go over because I know I love you or that you love them so much. And I do, I do love you. So and thanks for listening. Um, okay, so as always on shaneplays.com, and that's S H A N E P L A Y S dot com. Like I like to play, not like it's my place. Shaneplays.com, there's show notes up right now. So as we're talking, if you're like, oh, what, what was he talking about? Or I want to know more, uh, there's links to my guest, all that stuff. You can go to shaneplays.com, there's a show notes page. Uh, and then we do always go out as a podcast. Here lately, it's been going out on Monday, but it may go out before then, sometime in the next couple of days, and that'll be on the blog at shameplays.com. It'll be on iTunes and Stitcher and other fine, fine podcast directories. And then uh, last, we are always carried a week delayed, but we're working on getting it live on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. KryptonRadio.com. So join in the studio, and we will definitely dig in. Uh, later in the show deeply with them but hopefully they'll banter during the news segment i've got josh wilhelmy and stephanie straw from did i say that right josh uh it's wilhelm but wilhelm okay i think you've told me that before uh <laughs> it's it's a recurring uh gag on an unintentional gag on chain plays that i mess people's names up so got josh wilhelm and stephanie straw from game goblins who not only are they a sponsor of the show, but they have like an excellent game store right here in Little Rock. So we're going to be talking later in the day about um, cool game gift ideas for Christmas, uh, which is coming up Friday. We're less than a week away from Christmas. So you definitely want to listen in. Um, Zach, I've got like a little bit of an echo in my, is, is my level up a little high or I don't know. I don't know if I'm just hearing that or if the, if the ravening hordes of the listening audience might be hearing it. But anyway, it's, it's not a major issue. They just get to hear you twice. That's so what it is. Well, it's, not, it's almost like a, I don't know how to, yeah. Yeah, twice would be nice, but <laughs> this, this is more, I don't know how to explain it. It might just be my, on my end. But Zach, of course, our able-bodied producer, is joining us from the bridge of the Starship Enterprise and keeping <laughs> everything running uh, for the show. But let's, uh, let's dig right in. And, and as always, uh, Zach, let's listen into that hardworking news team. Oh, there they go. Hard workers. They work on Saturday. Can you believe that? Yep. And for every P- Patreon supporter I get, they get a dollar an hour raise. I mean, a penny an hour raise. <laughs> so for every dollar I get on Patreon, those guys get a penny an hour. Zach, uh, uh, Sal is back. He worked things out with the mob. He got it all worked out. So he's back in the newsroom with his fedora on chewing a cigar. So Sal is finally back. See, what happened was... Uh, Josh and Stephanie, it's been an ongoing drama with our news team. The mob put a put a hit out on one of our news guys named Sal. Wow! And what it yeah, what had happened was he was writing a story about the mob of expected shoppers on Black Friday, and the mob thought he was doing an expose on them, so they put a hit out on him, and he, and he had to go through all of his contacts and have a sit down with a big guy. And, but they worked it out. They he needs good. Batman, probably. Yeah, they he yeah he does need Batman. Little Rock needs Batman. We need Vigilante Justice. Yeah, we do totally. <laughs> Maybe we can get uh, who's the guy, Phoenix something. That guy that was running around. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there was some crazy guy on YouTube that, that was running around named Phoenix something. It was pretty funny. Um, okay, so the news. Here we go. First of all, and this is pretty cool. Here's some local news. And some people, you know, listen on the radio here in the Central Arkansas area. And then we have podcast listeners basically from all over the world. But if you're in Little Rock, um, the inaugural Arkansas Comic Con is today at the Lehman Library in North Little Rock. And it just started at 1 o'clock. So from 1 to 5 today, uh, and it's free from what I understand, uh, you can go to the Lehman Library in Little Rock, Little, North, Little Rock or North Little Rock, which is my, my turf, my hometown. Uh, and you can go to a free Comic Con. And, you know, they're going to do all the cool stuff cosplay and, and all the other stuff so so go check it out and then the link to learn more about that is on shameplays.com so uh now josh and stephanie i know you guys are big like gamers like as far as board games and all that stuff from the store are y'all video gamers at all 
I am, yes. You are. How about you, Josh? I used to be before okay. I you know, started a business and had yeah. kids. He's pretty much just a business <laughs> game. He, pl- he plays a game called Running Businesses. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Zach is uh, asking if you, can, if you can kiss the microphone, Josh. If you okay. Could, if you can... <laughs> The microphone loves you, Josh. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, and you love it. So, okay. Um, yeah, I get right. I don't get right on it. I do. A, I do a faux kiss. I get right up on it. So from a certain angle, it looks like I'm kissing it, but I'm not really kissing. I'm it. loud, so I just yeah. I can like yeah. You can back. you can project. You're naturally <laughs> loud. Um, well, uh, Hideo Kojima from the Metal Gear Solid series. Of course, there's been a lot of drama here lately. He wasn't even allowed to go pick up an award for Metal Gear. Um, Five, I think a solid five. Uh, do you play Metal Gear, Zach? Are you a, are you a Metal Gear guy? I don't. Okay, well, Hideo Kojima uh, has had a lot of drama here lately. He's a celebrated game designer, Metal Gear, and all that. He's leaving. Uh, the, I'm not even going to say the studio he was with. I'm not even going to give them any credit because it sounds like they've been treating him wrong. He's starting his own studio, and he and he's partnering with Sony to develop stuff for the PlayStation. So that's good. Uh, the video gamers, console gamers, I believe, will rejoice. But yeah, they they just had the video game awards, which is kind of like the Oscars of video games. Mm-hmm. And lawyers told him he could not go there and pick up an award he won for a game he won. So it's just, it's just been a big drama. So hopefully that's over with. Um, role-playing game news. Got a little bit of that. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, you know, has been doing this Dragon Plus app, right? Yep. For, for, for Dungeons & Dragons. Now, there's a beloved magazine you know, that was in published for at least 20 years called Dragon. And this is it's not quite Dragon, but it's a cool free app. It's hard to hard to complain. It's free. Well, now uh, you don't have to do it as an app. You can now read it on the web. So that that's kind of cool. Like I've been reading it on my phone and tablet. But if people just want to go read it on the web, you can now read Dragon Plus on the web. And the newest issue is out now. And once again, that link is on chainplays.com. Um Let's see here. We got several trailers. This was a week of trailers. Have y'all been keeping up with the trailers? I am so excited about some of these trailers. Are you? What about you, Josh? Are you a movie buff? Uh, yes, I love movies. Uh, <clears throat> uh, lately, though, like time has been. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, my my movie. Well, I've got a two year old, so my movie watching really crashed for a couple of years, but it's slowly starting to creep back up. So. Uh, but anyway, so can, you, can I talk about one? Yeah, well, I've got I got a whole okay. list right, right here. You, you so feel free to chime in if, yeah. if, if one of these excites you. And Zach, you do the same. Zach wasn't letting me banter with him for a while. But now he'll <laughs> now he'll banter with me. So I, I called him today and said, can I banter with you, Zach? He said, yes. Um, OK, so the first one I have here is, of course, the Independence Day. To yes. The resurgence trailer. It's old Bill Pullman. It's yeah. So yeah. Good. He's got like a big bushy beard and <laughs> I, it looks good. You know, and, and I actually watched, I don't know, sometime in the past year, I rewatched Independence Day, and it holds up pretty well for what it is. It's just a sci-fi action movie with good special effects. And, you know, this one, it looks like they're back. They came back, and they've spent 20 years preparing. Yeah, Goldblum's been yeah, he's Gold, on it. He's yeah, been preparing. Yeah, he's for 20 years, they've been preparing, and then they come back, and it's like like Spinal Tap. The joke is they turn it up to 11 like the, the volume, the, it looks like the aliens have turned it up to 11. So but there's no Will Smith. There isn't. And that's another news story I have here. People can go to shaneplays.com and, and find out about this. Will Smith's character is not in. Or at uh, least they're not showing it. Well, no. Now, he's definitely not in. And there's a reason. There's a website that's kind of one of those viral marketing websites uh, for backstory on the movie, and it explains why his character is not in the movie. Okay, so and, you need to go check that yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not going to say what it is, but if people want to go uh, find that out, there's a very clear reason he will not be in the movie. I'm going right now. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> And then, of course, here's the J.J. Um, uh, Abrams sabotage just with a Star Trek Beyond trailer this week. What did you guys think of the Star Trek Beyond trailer? I did see that one. Yeah. And uh, it, I don't know, it, it I, I read something that... Um, uh, Simon Pegg wrote, and I agree with him about how the uh, the trailer was not what I was expecting. You know, from a, a, a you know Star Trek. Star yeah. Trek, right? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely there's some Trek rage. There's yeah. some Trekkie rage. Well, there, here's but. the thing. Of course, I'm going to watch it, and of course, it'll be a good action movie. But Star Trek, at its heart, is not over the top action, right? Not like that. It's like Star Trek is this optimistic future of exploration, and they fight and get all crazy when they have to. But this trailer makes it look like it's just, you know, like Fast and Furious meets Star Trek, you know. <laughs> directed and, by Michael Bay. Yeah, you directed know? by, exactly. You know, and, and, but here's the deal. Trailers can be completely different from the movie, right? Yeah. Now, 
I, I didn't have, you know, when, in Star Trek 2009, when they rebooted the franchise, um, you know, they, there's a scene where young Captain Kirk is driving down the road playing Sabotage. Right. And I could kind of deal with that. But to do a whole trailer for Star Trek and Sabotage, I'm not their demographic. That's all I can say. But I'm still going to see the movie. Uh, I, the first two movies they've done uh, have been pretty good. Uh you know, I don't, I don't have any major problems with them. We have so. no reason not to trust JJ yeah. at this point. Yeah, at point. this I feel point. Like. So I, I feel like that like the trailer... Like, be leery about Michael Bay and Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles. But yeah. let's trust. In JJ, okay, we we'll trust. Tr- in JJ, like. we trust. So, <laughs> yeah. well, he did he did us a solid with The Force Awakens. I'll say that, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show. We will have a very brief, spoiler-free Star Wars Force Awakens um, discussion after the news. Uh, but we won't spend a lot of time on that today because um, it's... I spent four hours talking about it. You're not going to spoil it. Huh? You're not, you're not going to spoil I'm it. I'm not spoiling okay, good, nothing. Yeah. Nope, nope, no spoilers. I don't spoilers. want them turning off their radio now. Yeah, so. there will be no, <laughs> it's a it's a no spoiler guarantee uh, on, on the Star Trek Force Awakens. So, uh, and then of course we got the X-Men Apocalypse trailer. What do we think about that? Any, any yes, no? It might of, renew my faith in right? X-Men movies. <laughs> well, I thought the last one was pretty good. Um, was it, it was kind of the Days of Future Past thing. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it. I, I thought it was okay. The last two were pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I I don't think that Fox is doing a bad job with the X-Men franchise. And in and Brian Singer, who did the original X-Men movie, the first two X-Men movies, I think, is back for this one. So I think, I think it'll be pretty good. Um, there's a ton of other trailers we could talk about out there, but for time I'll pass on, but the fantastic creatures and where to find them, Harry Potter franchise, that, uh, trailer is out, uh, world of Warcraft movie trailer is mm-hmm. out <clears throat> just a ton of trailers, um, ton of trailers out there. So it's a good time if you're a movie buff for, for geeky trailers. So this is cool. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to wrap up the new segment here in a second so we can uh, get to the main stuff. Um, but and I'm, I'm excited about this because I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. Okay. I love Ghostbusters. Major Ghostbusters nerd from the 80s. Uh, you know, the, the real Ghostbusters animated show, the movies, all that stuff. Um, you know, they're, they're starting to release official, official photos of the new cast and costume. Have you seen any of these? Mm-hmm. They look pretty good. And, of course, with the new Ghostbusters, it's an all-female cast. Um, you know, so I hope that I hope they're just not doing that as a gimmick. You know, I, so that's that's the only thing I'm like, you know, don't make that gimmicky. I have no problem with them doing an all female cast as long as it's a good, solid story and, and all that stuff. Um, uh, but, yeah, there's a couple of pictures out there with them in costume. Uh, and then there's an and there's one of them where they're in front of I don't know if they're calling it the Ecto one, but, you know, basically the Ecto one, the hearse that is their their, you know, quick response vehicle or whatever. So. Um, those pictures, those links are up on shameplays.com. And this is cool. This, this gives me tingles because other than the force awakens, I think my favorite, uh, movie this year was Mad Max Fury Road. Um, and they're, they're talking about releasing a black and white version in theaters. I think that'd be pretty neat. Uh, cool. in fact, uh, is it George Miller who directed it? I think, um, yeah, he's directed all of them. He, uh, they filmed a black and white version while they were filming the main movie. And the intent was when you bought the Blu-ray version, you would get the full movie and then you would get the black and white version. And uh, something's gone wrong with that. So he's trying to get a limited release out. So uh, I, I, I would pay money to see that because I thought Mad Max Fury Road was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So and, and it's it's interesting to me that two of the movies this year that I really like went back to more practical effects and real stunts. And because Star Wars Force Awakens backed off of CGI and... Mad Max Fury Road, all those stunts were real. They had the Cirque, Cirque de Solil, however you say that. They had those people in there. Cirque almost. de Soleil. Yeah, that's it. yeah, those guys. <laughs> yeah, the Shayna Soleil guys. Yeah, they were <laughs> on the big poles and all that. Every car in that movie was real. They really made every car. None of that stuff was CGI. So that, that, that That's vi- super cool. Yeah, and it, it makes, I don't know, it makes a difference to me. So I love Terminator 2, but it kicked off this whole constant you know this cgi craziness in movies and then you know they ramped it up with with the star wars prequels and and we can back off of it a little bit folks let's just calm down <laughs> so any other trailers that you wanted to mention stephanie since you're all excited about trailers uh people are talking about teenage mutant ninja turtles you know the trailer actually looked kind of funny i know but i in, yeah. in michael bay i do not trust yeah well i, I trust not anymore it. it depends on what he mood hurt I'm me. In. i hate him for hurting me well how did he hurt you what movie did he hurt you with transformers the first transformers was, i liked the first transformers the ones that followed it i did not like but i thought the first transformers movie was all right actually 
The so, rest of them were pretty much cash grabs. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, but the first Transformers I thought was well paced and it actually had a pretty good story. Uh, yeah, the the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles they did a year or two ago I didn't like so much, but the trailer for this did look pretty funny. And Casey Jones is in it. And that's cool. We got Casey Jones. Just because you put a cool character in there doesn't I'm, mean I'm it'll saying. be I know. cinematic I, I'm, masterpiece. I'm one of those people you, you, you're going to trick me every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm gullible because I want to believe. I'm Fox Mulder. Okay. <laughs> so, and then finally, give us the fanfare, Zach. Bring it on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen to that. Come on, Josh. Let that sink in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I never get tired of listening This should to that. be, like, this should wake you up. It should. This should be your alarm clock it in the should. morning, I feel So, like. okay, we've been doing a countdown for the past several weeks. Uh, we are now at, I'm excited to announce, for the Star Wars Force Awakens countdowns. We're at negative two days. It's out. Yeah. So, and after, after the break. It's awake. Yeah, after the, yeah, the Force Awakens Awoken. Uh, and we are, after the break, we'll have a brief spoiler-free discussion of Star Wars The Force Awakens. But I did want to point out, uh, there's, a, there's a news item up on, uh, on shameplays.com from Polygon uh, that somebody wrote an actual pretty good editorial on why Jar Jar Binks is not the worst thing to happen to Star Wars. And they, and they wrote it from the perspective of the prequels came out when they were seven years old, and they loved Jar Jar. They absolutely love Jar Jar. It's for and, kids. Jar Jar's yeah, for kids. Yeah, and so the, you know they didn't have that visceral. I hate Jar Jar. Now I don't despise Jar Jar. I don't either. I could have done without Jar Jar, right. but I, I don't think that. I think the main problem with the pe- the prequels, even though I like the prequels because I'm a Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. So I always say it's like when you're a football team fan, you stick with it in good times and bad times. Yeah. So I, I like there's stuff in there I like because it's Star Wars, um, but the main my main problem with Star Wars prequels was the lack of chemistry, not. Jar Jar or this or that or the other you know there wasn't a lot of chemistry like there was in the in the pre in the original trilogy although I did love Revenge of the Sith I think because they were kind of trying to back into something yeah something it wasn't just an original well, it was know. like like Padme and Anakin had no chemistry yeah that was and the whole story lynched on them being <laughs> in love with it so anyway we got to take a break uh, I want to make sure to give you all plenty of time to talk about Game Goblin's goodness and Christmas gift gaming ideas. So, Zach, take us to a break, and when we come back, we'll have a spoiler-free, brief Star Wars The Force Awakens discussion on Shane Plays Radio. MegaWars.net. The classic online space strategy game has returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays And we are back uh, on Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. I'm Shane Stacks, your host. So glad to have you with us today. Uh, I've got uh, Josh Wilhelm and Stephanie Straw from Game Goblins. Uh, We will be talking uh, momentarily about uh, cool stuff at their store and also uh, Christmas gaming gift ideas. I want to have a very brief because 
you, you can't not mention Star Star Wars: The Force Awakens this weekend. I mean, it's it's a cultural thing. Now, <laughs> I guest hosted the Dave Ellswick show yesterday, and for four hours we pretty much talked Star Wars. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk it briefly today, and and it's spoiler free. If anybody's seen the movie or wants to see the movie, feel free to call in at 501-823-0965. But all we're looking and you can call anytime during the show, but no spoilers. Basically, you liked it, you didn't like it, whatever. Uh, but we don't, we don't want any spoilers uh, today. And and there's a couple of pretty big spoilers in the movie that we definitely don't want to ruin for people. I just want to say, um, I feel that people can, if you haven't seen it yet, you're probably already hearing the word of mouth. And I think people can rest easy. I feel that Star Wars is back. Um, a lot of people felt that Star Wars wasn't back when the prequels came out. Uh, and... There, I think people are are feeling differently with with the Force Awakens. Thought it was a great movie. Uh, it was a good movie for sure, and it was great in moments. It felt like Star Wars. It was great to see the old characters. It was good to see the new characters. Uh, the The story was good. There was some there was some cool Force moves that, that haven't been. I haven't even seen some of these Force moves in the, like the comic books or the cartoons or the books. I mean, it was there was some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, and 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 the, I think the most important thing for me, in fact, we were talking during the break, uh, that one of the things I felt that was missing from the prequels was the chemistry between the actors and the characters, and the chemistry's there in in the Force Awakens. So uh, I liked it. You know, I, I think that people will like it. It's already you know it's already set records, pre sales records. It made like 170 million dollars internationally on a Thursday, which is ridiculous. Uh, and I think that the interest plus the fact that it's well done, I think it's going to be big and I, and I, and, you know, and I think it's done well. So I know Stephanie's seen it. Mm -hmm. Josh hasn't. And Zach, you said you have not seen it yet, I right? Have not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie, what are your, what are your thoughts? I really liked it. Um, I, I am a star Wars fan. I'm not, you know, over the top right. fanatic, but I, I do love star Wars a lot. Um, I feel like even if you haven't seen any of the previous Star Wars movies, yes, there are people like that out there in this world that have not seen any of the episodes I know. before. I work, I work with somebody. <laughs> but, Zach has it. <laughs> Zach, man, we found Get that out, out last week when Bill Brackeen, uh, or Brackeen, Gals hosted, we found that out. And then I work with somebody who has not seen any of the Star Wars movies. So I'm like, you are, from now on, I do not refer to you by name. I will only refer to you as Padawan until you've seen at least one of the movies. No, we don't, we don't want to geek shame, but you, <laughs> oh, can, yes, we do. you can totally, you could totally watch this movie, yeah. even if, if you haven't seen the other ones and love if, it from start to finish. If you're a muggle, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's, it's okay for muggles. And you know, in the, uh, this was a news item a few weeks back in, 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 in Britain, in the in the wizarding world, if you're if you don't have magic, you're a muggle. Mm -hmm. In America, you're a nomad. No dash M A J. No, no mage. Yeah, no I got it. Yeah, that's officially from J K Rowling. I got it. So yeah. anyway, I thought it was good. Uh, the it was effects, outstanding. Effects were good. Uh, characters were good. A lot of great moments. Uh, you know, and I will not say what the spoiler is here. I'm not, I will soon. I will talk about it. I'm going to put like a two or three week limit on spoilers. And then I'm going to start talking about it on this show. Yeah. So I'm going to get people to, but I'm not going to like clamp down and not talk about it for like six months. I'm, right. This is ridiculous for as big of a movie as this is, but there is one major part of the plot that I did not like. Uh, we might need to talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> not on the radio right now, but other than that, um, I really liked it, and I thought one returning character's performance was slightly lackluster. Mm -hmm. Just one. Uh, yeah. Almost felt like they were kind of like, yeah, I've got to be here because I was in the other movies and they wanted me to be here. They checked out. Yeah, I really kind of <laughs> felt that. But it not so much that it made the movie terrible. Um, great movie. So if you're listening out there, 501-823-0965, or if you want to tweet me at Shane Plays, that's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S, feel free just say you liked the movie, you didn't like the movie, uh, you can't wait to see the movie, whatever. But I, I, I kind of, I wrote a, in fact, there's a blog post at shameplays.com. I did a non-spoiler review. You can go check it out. And I basically said that, I, I think the way I summed it up was that the shoulders of the prequels were not strong enough to carry the Star Wars, you know, mythology. But The Force Awakens shoulders were Mm -hmm. effortlessly carrying the Star Wars mythology. So It was actually spoiled for me the day of. 
Um, oh, you've no. seen lots of posts on social media, Facebook, like people are shutting it down. Yeah, for I, the weekend I until they see off. it. Yeah, I backed so off. So I was on a completely separate thread. It was actually something about Deadpool. And then somebody and threw it someone in there. And someone tossed jerk. in the, I, I, the whole thing. Total, I knew. Total jerk. I knew That's the ending jerky. of the movie. That is so jerky. But then again, if you think about Star Wars, it, they're not really movies that hinge on their plot twists. Yeah, so, but So, I mean, still. I don't know that it, this, it didn't ruin it for me, yeah. but I'm, I'm still not going to spoil it for people right. that don't want it. Um, I had it. Yeah, I, I don't like to have stuff spoiled, but but friendships are being ruined yeah, because of Star Wars. Yeah, basically. pretty much. <laughs> I remember, and this is the last thing I'll say in Star Wars, and then I w- we'll go into Game Goblins. I remember uh, this was when uh, the Phantom Menace came out, and I hadn't seen it yet, and there was uh, the soundtrack uh, from John Williams. And I picked it up and flipped it over and looked at the titles on the back of this of this of the uh, tracks. Oh no! And it said Qui Gon's Noble End. So I knew that. <laughs> I knew Qui Gon was going to die. Yeah. So when Darth Maul, you know, jacked right. him up, I, I knew it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, there was one other spoiler I got by flipping through a, a role playing game source book before I saw the Attack of the Clones, but that was my own fault. Okay, Game Goblins. Yeah. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do normally I read this before uh, going to a break. But Game Goblins is, and I appreciate it very much, a sponsor of the show. So I'm going to read this now to help introduce Game Goblins. Then we can talk about the store. And then I want to talk about, uh, you know, some ideas you think you guys think might make for good for good games. So some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer of Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week, including tournaments. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. So, now, now that we have Game Goblins here right in front of me, what would you like to add to that? If anything. Well, so, uh, I've, I've lived in Little Rock all my life, and I was super excited whenever we got Game Goblins because we did not have anything like this. And people are still finding out about this store. Right. So, I started going to the store, and I loved it so much that I made uh, Josh give me a job there. So How did, you, did you arm wrestle him? I mean, how did <laughs> yeah. you make him give you a job? He was just probably annoyed because I was in there every day. Yeah. Uh, he was like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Make yourself useful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Stephanie's really well connected with the community. Like she was uh, 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 a constant. I guess you're an admin of the the Central Arkansas Geek Club mm-hmm. oh, okay. uh, page on Facebook, and uh, she was constantly plugging us. And I was like, I'm not paying her anything, and she's yeah. doing all this free advertising right. for us. Like, uh, I need to get her like uh, on board, and, right? Which and, is cool. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Enthusiastic fans sometimes make the best 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 employees. So, uh, well, that's great. So, like, how long has Game Goblins been open? We opened in April of 2012. Okay. And so, uh, almost four years. Yeah, not quite four years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Start, you're, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, we started out, at, we had this uh, tiny space. It was like 2,000 square feet. And, right. Uh, um, you know, after uh, after a little while, it became, actually, it, it was, I guess, about six, seven months after we opened, I realized that we didn't have enough room, but right. we had a three-year lease. Well, so. that's a good problem to have yeah, yeah. if you're doing well enough that, you know, you, you don't have enough room for your inventory. Yeah. So. Now we have like 6,000 square feet and we still think, well, we could use some more, use but some there's more, yeah. there's tons and tons of space now. Yeah. The, the new location, I went in on your grand opening weekend um, and I mean, there's plenty of room. It's it's spacious, uh, but not not so open that I, I don't know how to explain it. it can, some stores can be too open. And it's not like that. You don't walk in and look and seem lost. Because right, exactly. It's too, like, exactly. I'm, I'm a socially anxious person, so I can okay. definitely identify with that. But you walk in, and the register's right there. They greet you. Right. So you can already, if you have that opportunity to ask questions or say, hey, I'm looking for right. this. So immediately, you have sort of some guidance whenever right. you walk in. And then the retail space is right there. Um, there's concessions. Uh, everything is all sort of right there, but if you walk past the retail space, that's the gaming area. The gaming area, which so is that's plenty, plenty big as well. Tons of yeah, tables. There's plenty a, big. There's always space. 
Um, occasionally we have big events, big release events, um, and that takes up some space. But there's there's pretty much always something to do there. So. Okay. And as, as you know, I mentioned previously, you do have a customer loyalty bro- program that's based on a percentage of purchases, not just some flat. Uh, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Well, um, whenever you uh, make a purchase of $35 or more, we, um, if, you have, if you're not part of our program, we give you one of our business cards on the back of it. There are 10 slots. And so we take the um, amount of your purchase and the date and write it down. And after you make 10 purchases, we take the average of those 10 purchases and uh, give you a coupon for that amount on your next purchase. See, I like that. It's not just some flat thing like I punch your thing so many times and you get a dollar off. And yet, you know, one guy who spent twenty dollars might get the get the same thing as the guy who spent two hundred. Right. So I like that a lot. You know, that that's really good. And let's not forget that if, if people are a first time uh, customer, mention Shane plays, and you can get ten dollars off your purchase of fifty dollars or more. So. Um, which we've been running that for a few months now. Those so. stack too. I mean, like if yeah. oh, uh, do if they? they? Yeah, okay. well, they, if they come in and spend fifty uh, fifty bucks, right? They're gonna get ten dollars off of that, and that purchase is still over thirty five. So we'll give them a punch on their card. Oh, for, cool for the, whatever the dollar amount was. Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll see. And it's gonna. And another thing I want to mention about uh, game goblins, and I'm kind of seeing a trend of this in general. Okay, but I, w- I want to say that you know you guys are definitely clean professional. Um, it's not surly or nasty. Now, you know, when I was coming up in my in my geek years, well, I'm still in my geek years, but I'm in, in my formative geek years, 80s, 90s, 2000s, all that. Comic book stores and game stores were dark, dank, and surly for the most part. I and I'm sure there's some stores out there that were good. I'm not, you know, but in general, that was. Um, that was the the um, that was at least the accepted perception. That was the it. accepted yeah. perception. And I went into more than one store like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I remember going. I'm not going to name names. I went into one store in the 90s, may have been the early 2000s, and I couldn't stay in there because of the odor. I'm sorry, I just couldn't. That is not game, game goblins. It's clean. It's bright. It's well organized. It's friendly. Uh, people are having fun. So, you know, it's it's not comic book guy from The Simpsons. It's it's nothing like that. So, uh, you know, I just want to reassure people of that. Now, I'm seeing in general, you know, the game stores seem to be and comic book stores are uh, getting better about their image, I guess, you know, from my perspective. Uh, but I mean, I, I feel the Game Goblins definitely takes it to a next level. I mean, it's really it's really nice inside. Is well, what I'm trying to say, you know, we have to. I mean, right. you know, what's your, um, uh, you know. I mean, there are plenty of, I mean, most people know that there are places online they can buy things and usually cheaper, you know, so you have to right. have a different value proposition than, than price. I mean, we, right. um, you know, uh, we have the free play space. We have knowledgeable staff that can actually, you know, teach you the games that we sell. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a different paradigm, but it, you know, it works right. for us. You know. That's the biggest thing, though, really, is being able to, for me, talk to someone about a game so that it'll help me decide what game. Like whenever I go to the comic book store and I, I want my comic book staff to say, hey, Stephanie, you know, you're reading Ms. Marvel. Right. There's going to be a new one coming out or check this right. out. This is kind of relating to this or, you know, something like that. So that's really important to me. And you can't get that online. Right. <laughs> There's well, no algorithm that can really give you that. So whenever you can have someone that can personally say, hey, I know that you play Ticket right. to Ride. Have you tried this right. other game? It's the um, relationship. Right. And, right. and just being able to teach the game, that's the biggest curve for me between purchasing a game and actually playing it. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to sit down. I don't want to read the rules, you know. <laughs> well, now, do y'all have the, um, do y'all have like a shelf people can, uh, are there like community play games and somebody can pick it, pick something off the shelf and, and, yeah, we and, have a and check out the game? Or? Huge demo library where okay. you can come and check out the game and decide if you like it before you purchase it. Right. Or you can just come in and play that game all the time. I mean, okay. we're... We have the space; it's there for you. Uh, if you if you don't want to buy the game because you just want to play it at Game Goblins, you know that's okay. Right. Um, but it, it's it's a bonus because people can definitely try before right. they it builds buy. a relationship. It yeah. lets them see different stuff. I, uh, you know, I, there's there's many reasons to support your friendly local game store, but I'll throw out a few. Okay, one is like that: I can go in, I can talk to people, I can do a demo game, sit down and play it, see if I like it, meet other people who like to play games, right? Um, all that stuff, do tournaments and everything. Uh, two, I I do not like to get excited about a game and then have to order it and wait for a few days. 
Yeah. So no matter how great the internet is, and I love the internet, I don't want to get all fired up about a game and then, oh, it'll be here in three days. I want to play it. I want to take it home or whatever, and I want to play it right then. I okay? am a geek that appreciates instant gratification. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So boom. And then three, as good as Amazon is, as good as all these other websites are, the backbone of the gaming industry are friendly local game stores. So much inventory is moving through those. So if you want to keep having lots of games, and right now we are in a gaming renaissance. It is, it's a it's weird, the golden age of games. Yeah, it's where we are in a, I mean, board games, uh, role-playing games, all that. Uh, war gaming, it's in a renaissance. It's huge. And, and there's two reasons that that's happening, in my opinion, uh, or two main reasons. One is uh, excellent friendly local game stores where people can go in and have community and two is of course kickstarter is is really bringing us a lot of good games but but you are not gonna have this great diversity of great games without strong friendly local game stores it's just not gonna happen um so you know consider checking out a a friendly local game store if you're out there listening and you have not already now i know that on free rpg day i threw game goblins out because there were only two locations in central Arkansas that were participating. And I know some people showed up. Mm -hmm. So I know people listen and and they will. So people go check out Game Goblins. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want you guys to tell us like what are some good stories that people might, or not stories, some games people might want to play that might make good gifts. Uh, You know, maybe some sales or specials or what's hot or anything like that. So let's take a quick break. Uh, When we come back on Shane Plays, we will continue to talk with Josh and Stephanie of Game Goblins about gaming Christmas gift ideas. MegaWars.net. The classic online space strategy game has returned. Bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition, leading to the ultimate battle of the galaxy. Grab your slot today in one of the most hotly anticipated indie games of 2015. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available during our pre-sale event running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure, where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays Hey, we're back on Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. I am Shane Stacks. I'm your host. I'm joined by Josh and Stephanie from Game Goblins, uh, who not only happen to be a beloved sponsor of the show, but also have a a, a darn good uh, game shop right here in central Arkansas. Uh, Basically, uh, it's at Canis and Bowman. near i know there's a senior tequila there there used is there still a subway there no there used to be like yeah, a, so okay. Just a subway Drop okay so movie. what where's some other Alley oops okay um uh i think uh sam's clubs right across the street bowman liquor yeah. bowman <laughs> liquor okay so there's a there's a landmark for everybody there's yeah. a landmark for everybody so drop by anytime Drop-less and movie. Yeah, tropical smoothie. Uh, in, drop by anytime, and like I said, you can meet the staff. You could just grab a game off the demo rack and sit down and play. So what we're going to talk about and radio. I like to say that radio time is a predator that stalks us all our lives, which is a line I basically stole from Star Trek Generations. Radio goes so fast. So we have a little over ten minutes. 
Uh, and, and I'd like to maybe y'all talk about what's hot right now, maybe some good sales or discounts or gift ideas that you have, uh, anywhere from a big ticket to maybe a stocking stuffer. So feel free, let her rip. Well, so games are the perfect Christmas gift. I'm not just saying that because I, you know, work at Game Goblins, but um, I, I was that customer. <laughs> so uh, nobody's going to be upset about getting a game. You know, you get like socks, a sweater, a tie. Mm, maybe, I, maybe I'll use right. that. Right. Anyone can use a game. I mean, anyone can play it. Uh, if you don't particularly care for that game, you know someone that that wants that game or that can play that game. So uh, it's a really easy the, – the shopping hassle is not there at Game Goblins. There's not – Long lines, you know, people irritated, trying to get stuff in, trying to get deals. And if know. anyone gets irritated, then, oh, okay, we got, uh, we have a call coming in real quick. Uh, I'm going to, well, it's going to be Otto from Little Rock. But first, uh, I did want to say that I've seen if anyone gets irritated um, at, at the store, a customer or an employee, I've seen Jeremy, the manager, swing in like Tarzan <laughs> and pick them up and carry them off. I've seen it. I've seen it. Otto from Little Rock. Thanks for joining Shane Plays. What's going on, buddy? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm by the way, about, by the way, from yesterday, your question about yeah. who was Plo Kloon's uh, clone commander, that was Commander Wolf. But anyway, go ahead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. All right. So I know I think um, one upcoming type of game is cooperative games like Zombie Side and Dead of Winter. Yeah. I was trying to see if they knew of any others coming out that are any good or any, any that are existing. Well, yet. we mentioned one during the break. I've got a good one, though. So if you like cooperative games, Pandemic Legacy is super hot. It's a huge hit. I have my copy. Um, I am going to start it in the new year. So if you're familiar with Pandemic, it plays similarly to that, except since it's a legacy game, if you're not familiar with those types, you actually are going to alter the game based on your decisions. You're going to be putting stickers on cards to upgrade huh. your character. That's you're going to be ripping up cards. So what? the game is going to... The game... What? Yes, I know. It's hard. Evolves. It's like, really hard. The game evolves with you, and um, it plays over several months. This is season one is out right now of Pandemic Legacy. Interesting. Um, and this seasonal gameplay is more and more of a concept I've seen. Seeing instead of a new version of the game, they come out with seasons to the game. Yeah, like Zombicide does that. Yeah. So so, yeah. so there's season one right now, um, and we have plenty of copies at Game Goblins for you. Um, other games, uh, Mysterium, if you're familiar with that one, by Portal Games. There was actually one uh, Polish copy that became popular after Board Game Geek convention and Gen Con, um, but now they have an, uh, the English version. And that's available, and they've kind of redone it, did the art. It has really cool cards. You work together. One person is the ghost sort of sending clues to the rest of the players, and they have to figure out uh, who, who, what, where uh, is the person that has uh, murdered the ghost. And what was the name of that one again? Mysterium. Mysterium. Okay. By Portal Games. Is it fair to say it's kind of a cross between Dixit and Clue? Yeah, we, yeah. we kind of say Clue concept Dixit. But. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now – I, I almost hesitate to bring this up because I know Stephanie was like, I want to make sure that, that we have some stuff in stock before we talk about it. So if I'm doing a boo-boo, uh, then, you know, I'm sorry. But now there's a game similar to Zombicide that just came out, Ghostbusters. Yeah. Do y'all have that in stock? We or? do have that okay. in stock. It was a little bit delayed. They had planned for that to come out around right. Halloween. But, um, you know, production is not not predictable <laughs> all the time. So, But we have it in stock. And uh, that one does play similarly to Zombicide. has a bunch of miniatures in it. Right. Well, one of my favorite cooperative games, um, and I like these newer games. Otto, hold on. You know, we'll, we'll keep talking yep. with you. You don't have to drop. Otto's a friend of the show. Okay. So uh, he's actually my D&D group. On okay, PG cool. Nights. Yeah. Hi, so, Otto. <laughs> um, Air Force veteran, or not Air Force veteran, active Air Force. Yeah. So we love, we love no, Otto. Air Force veteran. Yeah, we love Otto. Are you a vet? You're still active duty, aren't you? No, I'm a veteran. Okay, yeah, veteran. Yeah, anyway, good. okay. <laughs> so, uh but one of my favorite cooperative games that did not hit that hard uh, is the Star Trek Expeditions. I love that game, but I think there's so much math in it that a lot of people don't like it. Uh, but th but they're, they're, the point is that they're coming out with games that have like built-in AI into the board game. Mm -hmm. You can play a lot of these games single player. Mm -hmm. You can play against, and Star Trek Expeditions is like that. Now, the reason I wanted Otto to stay on the line is because a few months ago I had Kevin Clay on local uh, – personality radio guy uh and he was he was counting down his top favorite card and board games and Otto scolded us for leaving out munchkin 
So how how is Munchkin doing these days at Game Goblins? Munchkin is an evergreen. I yeah. think that I think that it will stay forever. <laughs> I've never. I, I'm going to lose geek points for this. I've never. Pl- I've never played Munchkin. That's okay. Yeah. There's I've, no. There's no geek shaming. You don't have to have yeah. geek cred to play these games. There's so many to choose from. It's totally fine. I I am a huge lover of board games, and there are tons that I have not played. So. Wow. Well, there are very few products at the store, very few lines that we carry the entirety of the line. Um, I mean, 40K is one of them, uh, Warhammer 40K, but Munchkin is another. Like, we carry right. every SKU. That, that and Cards available. Against yeah. Humanity. Yeah. Like, we have mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe uh, I've, never played, I've never played Munchkin. Uh, in fact, I'm working with... Um, the Steve Jackson Games has mm-hmm. reps, and they call them MIBs, like Men in Black. Yeah. And I've, I've recently met the guy named Tony for Arkansas, and I'm going to have him on the show to talk about Munchkin and, and Jerps, and, or Gerps, I always mispronounce it, all that stuff. So, And that's another thing I wanted to point out, um, was it's not just board games. You guys have card games, you have war games, you have role-playing games. Mm-hmm. I'm a role-playing game guy. Yep. Big, I like board games, but... Uh, We've also got, you know, you've got Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Star Wars. I mean, what are, what are some of the role playing games? I know you carry Castles and Crusades, which is one of yes. our sponsors. Thirteenth Age is one of the 13th new ones. Age. Um, a lot of people really enjoy. That's that. more like a storytelling D and D, right? Is that I, I don't quite understand Thirteenth Age yet. I hear it's much more narrative. Do, do we know? Do we have a handle on it? Uh, well, so your your characters that are influenced by these deities. So um, your abilities are based on uh, how much favor you give certain deities. What's he I'm sorry. I, messed oh, yeah. up. I was talking to Zach. I was using the talk back. I messed up. Separately. Yeah. Uh, um, so you're kind of evolving more. I mean, I really feel like they're all storytelling. That's right. the, kind of the whole well, point. Yeah, right? I hear that. Like, I mean, because let's be honest, you can have an entire session of D&D that's just combat. Uh, well, yeah. D&D fourth edition. maybe. Right. Yeah. That, which that's the only one I haven't played. But I love fifth edition. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I did want to give a quick shout out to Castles of Crusades. They're one of our sponsors. We had Stephen Chenault on few weeks ago we're going to have him back on i actually ran my first game of castles or crusades a few weeks ago i love D. Mm-hmm. i play D every week but castles or crusades was old school in all the right ways it felt it was all the good stuff of old school mm-hmm. none of this the annoying stuff it's retro but it's new and different yeah and it's yeah. it's really good so and y'all carry you're one of the only locations i think in central arkansas that actively carries castles and crusades stock and and for the people that that know their rpg history Gary Gygax worked with Troll Lord Games. Who mm-hmm. did, so there's there's a lot of uh, heritage in, in Troll Lord Games right out of here at Little Rock. So um, now let me ask you about a game and ask how this one's doing. I love this game. In fact, we may be playing it with some friends tonight. Bang. Do y'all sell a lot of Bang? Yeah. I um, love Bang. Bang. I, I love the dice version. I play that I a lot. I haven't played the dice version. Audio, have you played Bang? No, I haven't played that one yet. Okay, it's like a spaghetti western card game. <laughs> yeah. And and nobody knows who anybody else is. Yeah. So you have to figure out. I think the only person you know who is is the sheriff. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love that game. So there's a little bit of clue in that, like who is who. There's a lot of games that are sort of coming out with dice versions, yeah. dice iterations, or uh, bigger games that they come out with just card versions, like Otto had mentioned, Dead of Winter. Um, John Gilmore, the designer, is actually working on just a card, just cards version of that game. Okay. Um, so yeah, I haven't played the dice and now, and there's also, is it dice storm dice stormers? There's a, not dice stormers. There's a dice masters, dice masters, okay, I was which like, it's like, like I, I feel like it's kind of like magic, the gathering with dice, like it's, it's dice, collectible dice drafting. Okay. It's yeah. collectible dice. You mm-hmm. build your, you basically mm-hmm. build a deck of dice kind of thing. Right. How is that selling? It's doing pretty well. I mean, okay. we, uh, um, uh, they come out with a large number of, new skews um like it seems like every other month we're getting a new set that comes out or whatnot so um but the nice thing about the game is that i mean the starters are like between 15 and 20 that's a good stocking stuffer and it's a perfect size for a stocking stuffer too and the booster packs are 99 cents oh seriously how many how many dice do you get you get two dice and two cards nice yeah so and another cool thing about a dice master is you can mix fandoms so Mm-hmm. You can have D and D and the X Men and all this stuff, and they all work together. And yeah. soon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Teenage Turtles. Mutant, Teenage, yeah. Are you reading the the Batman Teenage Mutant? Yes, Ninja I love yeah, it. That was it's pretty so good. good. Yeah. Okay, guys, <laughs> I can't I believe this. I'm about to have to draw us down. I take about a minute, and then and and I'll, I'll, I might have to stop us. Uh, do you have anything on sale or that you really recommend at the moment? Or we, what's a big seller? We do have a clearance table right now that we're doing through the end of December, and everything on it is forty percent off. Um, but all of our games are 
really great last minute purchases for the holidays or really just any time, just uh, family get togethers, family gatherings, they're perfect to pull out. If you're not sure what uh, you want to get your friend, family, or coworker, then we have gift cards. We can load any amount onto good, those. Good so point, gift cards. Whatever you choose, we have gift cards. Those are super great. Um, and I then, keep messing up stuff. <laughs> you do. You're so booth. distracting. I have, yeah. Sorry. I have geek ADD. Stop. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Shiny. Squirrel. Um, we have several. Uh, the shelves are labeled, so it's easy to find the type of game that you want. We have a start here section, which is a lot of good starters for those first-time gamers, and then also a popular section. Cool. Okay. What about you, Josh? You want to throw anything out there? Um, well, I, you know, when you mentioned the uh, uh, the discount table, um, uh, a lot of the stuff on there is, I mean, a lot of people think clearance table, oh, it's like junk or whatnot, but um, we have some really high quality games there, like Dark You're Moon. crazy. I don't, Josh put these games on there, and I'm that like, why did you like, put why them is on that there? On? That's such a good game. How is, let me ask real quick, how is HeroClix doing these days? I used to be a big HeroClix guy. Is that still doing We anything? have a regular group that meets every okay. week, you know, week. How is Magic doing? Is that still a big one? Is it's, that? Um, it's amazing Magic right now. Magic is okay. the thing. I was, I was telling uh, my friend Matt, who's in town right now, uh, like my brother from another mother. I love him. He flew in from Germany to help me work on my finances. Best guy in the world. Uh, but me and him got into magic back in the 90s when it first came out. And he traded a box of cards one time from Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Eclipse. Just ridiculous. <laughs> so um, anyway, guys, Game Goblins uh, at the corner of Canis and Bowman. Go check them out. They're great. And I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. Josh, Stephanie, thanks so much for being in today. Otto. Throw out one game. If people are going to buy one game right now, what's it going to be? King of Tokyo for... Oh, I love King of Tokyo. (laughs) It's like Yahtzee with monsters. Okay, (laughs) real quick. Tweet of the week. Ash Sevilla. Sometimes when older people stare at me from a distance, I wonder if it's a time-traveling relative checking out their gramps in the past. Think on that one. Next week will be the Christmas show. And then a week after that, we'll have more goodness on Shane Plays, a journey into things we love. Thanks so much for joining us, and make sure to pay attention or look out for the podcast version.